Hello, good morning or good afternoon to Madam Wong and also to my fellow friends. Welcome to our video presentation. The topic we will cover today is chromatography, which is from Chapter 7. Before we start our presentation, we would like to introduce ourselves. My name is Chintami. Hi, my name is Nur Emma Farzana. My name is Tanya Arisha. What is chromatography? Chromatography is a technique used to separate components of a mixture based on the rates at which they are carried through a stationary phase by gaseous or liquid phase known as the mobile phase. So, what are the differences between stationary phase and mobile phase? I will explain it to you. In stationary phase, it is a phase that is fixed in place either in a column or a planar surface. The stationary phase can also be a solid or a liquid that is supported on top of a solid. For mobile phase, it is a phase where it moves or flows through the stationary phase while carrying its analyte mixture. It is also called as the eluting fluid. The mobile phase can either be a liquid or a gas. Alright, in this diagram, you can see the process of both phases in a column. You can see that the stationary phase stays in fixed position while the mobile phase flows through the stationary phase. There are four types of chromatography. The first one is absorption, second one is partition, the third one is size exclusion, and the fourth one is ion exchange. For adsorption, analytes are separated based on the different degree of adsorption on a solid stationary phase. For partition, solutes are separated based on the partitioning between a liquid mobile phase and a stationary phase coated on a solid support, which is silica. For the last one, it is size exclusion. Solvent molecules are separated based on their sizes by their ability to penetrate a sieve-like structure, which is stationary phase. So, large particles cannot enter gel and are excluded. They have less volume to traverse and elute sooner. Meanwhile, the small particles can enter the gel and have more volume to traverse their elute later. Techniques in Chromatography so, in planar chromatography, which is also a type of chromatography, uh, is divided into two techniques, namely paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography TLC technique. These are the processes included in the paper chromatography technique. First, a sample is spotted using the capillary tube on a line drawn on the filter paper. Then, the paper inserted into the solvent saturated chamber. Make sure the paper is dipped into the development solvent and does not exceed the line that has been drawn. Lastly, the solvent will carry various spots upward with separated components at different rate. The stationary phase in this technique is filter paper while the mobile phase is organic solvent. Next is the process in TLC, thin layer chromatography technique. For first and second steps, they are similar to the steps in the paper chromatography technique, which are sample is spotted using the capillary tube on the line drawn. Then the TLC plate, which is the stationary phase used in this technique, is inserted into the solvent saturated chamber. Make sure that the TLC plate is dipped into the solvent, not exceeding the line that has been drawn. As the solvent moves up, it will cause the spots to move as well. A good solvent causes a good separation of the components of the mixture, which will produce different separated components and a solvent front. The measurement of the tension factor RF value. The formula for RF value is the distance solute moves divided by the distance solvent front moves. 
the distance solute moves is measured at the center of the solute spot or at its maximum density. All distances are measured at the origin line. This is the example of calculation of the RF value. The distance for solute moves is 2.1 cm and the distance for solvent front moves is 2.8 cm. Thus, divide the distance solute moves which is 2.1 cm by the distance solvent front moves which is 2.8 cm. Total up and we will get 0 0.75 as the answer for the RF value. After studying and discussing about chromatography, we can actually learn that there are many uses of chromatography in our everyday life. So what are they? Here are four uses of chromatography in our daily life. Firstly, chromatography is useful in creating vaccines. The process was used to find out which antibodies are the most effective at fighting deadly viruses. Secondly, it is also useful for food and beverages testing in industries. This is to ensure the safety of food and beverages for humans to consume. Thirdly, chromatography can help in drug testing by identifying substances within the bloodstream. This is widely used in sport to test athletes. And lastly, chromatography is also used to help catch criminals. In line with programs like CSI, gas chromatography is used to analyze blood and cloth samples, helping to identify criminals and bring them to justice. Before we end our presentation today, I would like to make a conclusion. To conclude, Chromatography is a versatile and a powerful technique that can be used to separate and identify a wide variety of compounds. It has many applications in a variety of fields and it is an essential tool for scientists and researchers. Here are the references we used to do our research for this presentation. That, that is all. all. Thank, Thank you. you.